We headed to Tucson to learn more about why Arizona is a laboratory for anti-immigrant policy and to participate in a cultural event in solidarity with people fighting SB 107. Who your family be? Where your papers at? Don't it sound like a chop and screw track? Feds on my back taking photos. Border patrol equals the stop bro. They have to get ya. Uh, we have the most number of migrant deaths in the United States, people trying to cross the desert because it's sort of the focal point where people cross to get to other locations in the country. I'm Dr. Greg Hess, the Chief Medical Examiner for Pima County. We're at the Pima County Medical Examiner's Office in Tucson, Arizona. The majority of the people that are crossing and, and dying, anyway, are between 20 and 40. I think we had 75 migrant deaths in 2001, 145 in 2002. From 2002 to 2011, we averaged about 184 a year. Our busiest year was in 2010, where we had 230 deaths. And in 2012, we're about uh, at average for this time of the year. A lot of people already have family in the United States or have crossed multiple times before and are either on their way back uh, into Mexico or on their way back into the United States. It's a heartbreaking experience to witness the deadly reality of the border, to drive through the hot deserts that migrants walk across for days, and to see the body bags. It reminds me that the real cost of failed immigration policy is the lives of mothers, fathers, and young people. Tucson has become the front line in the war on migrants. Militarized border walls in California and Texas have funneled migrants through the hottest and most deadly parts of the Arizona desert. When we started funneling them in, I kid you not, the local media would run the same video of like dozens of men jumping a wall and they would show that same video nightly with scary music and call it the border report and we began to create resentment and hatred. Attorney and activist Isabel Garcia has been on the front lines of immigration since the 70s. When they decided to seal traditional crossing points for all the Mexican immigrants, they funneled them through Arizona. And they knew that there would be death. They sealed California. They sealed El Paso. And what they did was begin to funnel. And why Arizona? Arizona was picked because it's a highly conservative state, always has been. Secondly, it was the most growingly conservative state because we were the fastest growing state for at least 10 years, and we still are. Who's coming in? Not immigrants. Well, immigrants from the Midwest, retirees. Retirees means what generally? People that are older, white, conservative with some money. They come in here with this attitude and they've changed the politics even worse. Uh, they call you KKK, they didn't, they, I think it's an honor, right? I, I well, from the means we're doing something. It, just all the right people yeah, are doing it. means we're right. doing it. We have over a thousand illegal immigrants coming across our border a day. And now it's just not the normal uh, what one would assume illegal immigrants coming to work. It's absolutely an invasion of our country. Due to elected officials like Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Governor Jan Brewer, and ex-Senator Russell Pierce, the state of Arizona has become a laboratory for some of the harshest anti-immigrant policies. These people have built a political career by driving fear and terror into the Latino communities of Arizona and by legalizing racial profiling. Don't tell me that we can't take care of all those illegals that are here in the United States. They want amnesty. And that's not fair. Go back, go back, go back. Go back. Go back. We are at the U.S. District Courthouse in Tucson, and we're about to go see Operation Streamline, where about 70 migrants get deported in less than an hour. We pay a private corporation, Corrections Corporation of America, a Tennessee-based company, $17 million a month to incarcerate immigrants for the grand crimes of illegal entry and re-entry. If you've been deported before, and you are found in the country after having been deported, you're guilty of a re-entry. It's a felony, and you are incarcerated anywhere between two and 20 years in prison. I mean, how many people in the public know that? So they've created this industry. They basically made a business 
and a political movement out of the hatred, persecution, and jailing and deportation of immigrants, and all being done in increasingly in private prisons. So it's no longer directly supervised by the government, but you have a corporation whose business is to jail people and to keep them there. And so this business doesn't want to see their investment go away, so they support legislators at the state and federal level that are going to keep the prisons growing with silly, absurd, but extremely tragic and dangerous laws. After leaving the courthouse, we headed over to Scrappy's, a local community arts center, to start working on butterfly murals for Friday night's Migrant Justice Festival. The mural that I'm painting here behind me is gonna be a piece that's gonna go on a main avenue here in Tucson, and it's a piece that's gonna celebrate migrants and compare them to butterflies to make a statement that migrants have a right to move. Meanwhile, a group of musicians and poets took a tour to see the border wall and have a freestyle session. Who your family be? Where your papers at? Don't it sound like a chop and screw track? Feds on my back taking photos. Border patrol equals the stop bow. They have to get ya. I'm just minding my biz. Officer tripping like a Lambie. Here's pop quiz. How did we let it get this far? Spy drones got me on radar. My name is Alex Soto. Um, today we're here at the so-called U.S.-Mexico international border. I say so-called because this line is an arbitrary line that has been built in the middle of my community, my homeland. You know, this is the part of the world where we come from. Like, we don't come from anywhere else, me and Amy here, and all the other young Otham, all our elders, everybody back home. We're here today to bring that light, to bring people together. And with hip-hop music, that's one way to draw attention to the issues here and be able to bring other folk who are not, you know, who have no idea what's going on. Or maybe, you know, have an, a rough idea but don't know about us as Native people that are still here. Somebody asked, like, do you ever think this wall would ever come down? And I feel like, if we come together in unity, we're trying to smash the walls of hate, you know what I'm saying? And that's where it starts, and then these physical walls come down right after that, you know? You know, this whole experience is about just being humble and listening and learning. These issues are not limited to where we stand now. These are interconnected to the struggles everywhere we live. And similarly, it's not just about connecting the struggles and looking at how similar the oppression is everywhere that we are, but also, more importantly, looking at the resistance and the resilience that's coming out of the communities here and hip-hop and poetry. This is about us creating culture and us telling our stories that aren't going to be told otherwise and to really build that parallel universe where these walls don't exist. We want people to know that we're still here. We've always been here and we continue to fight for our rights to be, to be who we are. Donald, them people of the desert. We under attack, time to do it like be in my chute and fight back. It's like that. Finally, Friday night, we're here in front of Scrappies and the event is fully underway. Uh, some of the artists performing tonight include Invincible, Jasiri X, Progreso, Dirty Verbs, and Shining Soul. So let's go check it out. Sometimes we struggle so much. We lose sight of what we're fighting for, you know what I'm saying? If you can just close your eyes. All of us in a fight, you're fighting against oppression, you're fighting against the border patrol, you're fighting. Just close your eyes and envision your perfect world. In fact, put your hand over your heart and envision this perfect world, this world full of love, this world full of unity that we're fighting for. And I'm going to take you there. Let's go, DJ Slopo. So many walk the earth's surface and they don't know their purpose, not sure of their future, so they walk around nervous and the schools don't teach them, man, that's such a disservice, and they treat us like garbage because we come from where the dirt is and we wear t-shirts of our friends that got murdered. Oh, not, not only, you know, like migration, I got changed, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like the caterpillar turns into the butterfly and this is the finished product, it's beautiful. I think it also kind of represents that change is beautiful and things can be ugly, but you can change things and then they'll 
turn into a butterfly. I think it's really symbolic of, of what's going on here, that transformation that, that we're all going under and through as a community and, and going to continue to see that growth here. I can't tell you how grateful we are to the artists that come in, not only to learn, but then for these artists to come and engage with our community and, and provide you know, their art for our communities and perform for our communities in a gesture of solidarity is, it, it, it makes me want to cry because the rest of the country doesn't know. Living life in the clouds, the sun is looking so bright to me now, like a kite from the ground. I mean, she's amazing, and I saw this poster that said something about keep your government hands off my pussy kind of thing, and I was like, oh my god, what the hell, I have to know who's doing this kind of work, because you don't really see things that are in your face like that. So I think it's really powerful, the work that she's putting out there, and it's inspiring. Traditionally, you think of the butterfly as metamorphosis, as transformation, you're able to start a certain way and evolve, and you find beauty in that. There is a connection between what is currently going on with the Mexican community and the immigrant community and what went on with the African American community and our history of oppression in America. It's one thing to read about these things in the newspaper or on the internet, it's very impersonal, but it's a whole different thing to look a person in their eye and to feel their pain. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, to feel their love and feel the community that's here is so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? The people here are very hospitable and very loyal. They're wonderful people here. And I'll, I'll never forget them. And I'll remember their stories that they told. And I'll take their stories with me because now their stories are my story. Like a kite from the ground. Come look at all this light that I found. Next time on Voice of Art. We are heading to the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, where we will be hosting an art festival and supporting local actions that speak out against the record-breaking deportations. The challenge is going to be that we're essentially walking into a highly militarized police state, where the mere act of unfurling a banner or wearing a face mask has become outlawed. What they have essentially done is make art illegal. <laughs>